It's Miss Danielle again, and I am so excited to be able to walk through chapter three of our book, The Biggest Story, with all of you today. So we've covered a lot of ground so far, so really fast, let's do a recap. So we started chapter one with creation. God created everything, and it was good. And then we saw the first sin, the not good part of the story. And then Adam and Eve had to leave God's perfect creation. Then yesterday, in chapter two, we spend some time in the book of Genesis again, this time looking at chapters 6 through 11. We heard about some bad days, like the first murder, when Cain murdered his brother Abel, and when God flooded the earth to punish the people's sin, and then again when God scattered all of the people everywhere after the Tower of Babel. But we also heard that even in the bad days, there were some bright spots, times when God showed the love and care that he still had for his people even when they messed up pretty big. We learned that God saved Noah and his family from the flood. And then we learned that God even promised Noah that he would never again flood the earth. So we talked about covenants and what it means when God makes a promise with his people. We also heard how later, even when the people still rebelled against God and built the Tower of Babel, God still wasn't done saving his people. So not only was it a time when things were scary and uncertain, but God used that time to help more people learn about him. So that was yesterday. Now let's get into today's chapter. We have a lot of ground to cover, and I'm excited to get to unpack all of it with you. So let's start in chapter three. Not too long after the whole tower business, God called a man named Abraham to leave his home and go to a new country. Actually, his name was Abram at this point, but everyone remembers him as Abraham. When God called Abraham, he made a lot of big promises. He promised to bless Abraham and to bless everyone who blessed Abraham. He promised to curse everyone who cursed Abraham. He promised Abraham a land and a child. God promised that Abraham would be the father of a great nation and that all nations would be blessed through him. Pretty much all the blessings that God wanted to give Adam and Eve, he promised to Abraham. And the best part? This time, God was going to do everything himself to make sure Abraham got his blessings. You might think that God wanted to bless Abraham because he was such a swell guy. But Abraham didn't know God at all when God called him. And even after he got the call and all these promises, Abraham could still be a liar and a bit of a scaredy cat. Abraham's life had a lot of ups and downs, but he had two things going for him. The only two things, it turns out, that really matter. God's promise to bless him and Abraham's belief in God's promise. That's all Abraham had, which was a good deal because it was all he needed. At times, it looked as if God wasn't going to keep his promises to Abraham. For one thing, it was about a hundred years before Abraham and his wife Sarah, who used to be called Sarai, had a baby named Isaac, who thankfully was always called Isaac. And then when the baby grew into a boy, God told Abraham to kill him. That must have seemed like a not so funny way to make a great nation out of Abraham. But Abraham listened to God anyway. And at the last second, God gave Abraham a ram to sacrifice instead of his beloved son. It was God's way of saying, I'll take care of the rescuing. Just trust me. Eventually, Isaac grew up, got married, and had some kids of his own. Twins, to be exact, Esau and Jacob. God picked Jacob to get the blessing, even though he was the younger brother and wasn't supposed to get the blessing. But God is God, so he gets to pick. Jacob had 12 sons, and this time it was the fourth son, Judah, who wound up with the best blessing. Jacob told Judah that a lion of a leader would come from his family. Great blessings are not so great people. Isaac was sort of a weakling. Jacob was a selfish trickster, and Judah did such dumb stuff. We don't even want to talk about it. And yet, again and again, God kept his promises all the same. He blessed the whole lot of them, despite themselves. Maybe the snake crusher would still come from the gnarled branches of the Abraham Isaac Jacob family tree. 
And that's where we're gonna stop for today. So a lot of family tree um, type things happening in our story today, but okay, a lot of great promises for us to unpack as well. So again, this part of our story is also coming from the book of Genesis. Don't worry, we're gonna leave Genesis tomorrow. But specifically the parts of Genesis that we're going to talk about today come from chapters 15 and chapter 22. Okay, so today we're going to look at all of God's promises to Abraham. And we're also getting our clearest picture here yet of how God intends to rescue his people. There's still sin. We can't forget that. But we're seeing a shift in the story now. So let's look at some key passages together. So you know what to do. If you don't have it already, go grab your Bible. Pause the video. I'll wait here for you. All right. So now you've got your Bible. And if you don't have it, you're tuned in, ready to listen. Okay, we're going to flip to Genesis chapter 15. So we're still in that first book of the Bible. Okay. But we're moving a little bit further in now. So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to look at verses 5 and 6. So if you have your Bible, I want you to follow with me. If you don't have it, just listen, okay? All right, starting in verse five. And he brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. So in this particular key passage, we have God making another covenant. So we talked about a covenant yesterday when we talked about Noah, and we said a covenant is like a promise. So here again, we have God making a promise. This time he's making a promise to Abraham. So God told Abraham that his descendants would be a great nation. Now, this may seem kind of like a silly promise, especially since Abraham didn't have any children, but God intended to keep it just like he does with all of his promises. Not only that, Abraham believed and trusted God's promise. Okay, so that's an important part of our story here, too, is not only did God promise something, but Abraham believed and trusted that promise, even when that promise didn't, it didn't seem like God was going to keep it. So even when Abraham didn't quite understand, and even when he still continued to sin, because Abraham wasn't perfect either, Abraham believed what God said, which is comforting as we look at the next key passage in the story. So now we're going to flip over just a few chapters. And we're going to look at chapter 22. So go ahead and flip there now. So from 15, we're going to flip over to chapter 22. And then we're going to look at verses 9 through 14. So a little bit of a longer section this time. Did you find it? Awesome. So we're going to start in verse 9. It says, When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order, in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on top of the altar, on top of the wood. So we're going to stop right there, just to get a little context, okay? So God has kept his promise to Abraham. Abraham has had a son. Abraham and his son are going to a place to make a sacrifice to God, okay? God told Abraham to sacrifice his only son. So remember that promise we just heard, that God told Abraham his descendants were going to be a great nation, but now he's being told to sacrifice his only son. Okay, and that's where we're going to pick up in verse 10. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. So, whew, again, that's a lot to unpack. Okay, so if we think back to that promise, that God made to Abraham back in chapter 15. Okay, God promised that he would make Abraham a great nation. And now we see him telling Abraham to sacrifice his only son. And this seems very scary and kind of confusing. 
And it probably felt that way to Abraham. It certainly felt that way to Isaac. And it can feel that way to us, too, as we read it. Okay. But ultimately, okay, what we see happening here is that God didn't have Abraham sacrifice his son. God provided another way for Abraham to make the sacrifice. And so what God is doing here is he's painting a picture of what he's ultimately going to do for all people, not just Abraham and Isaac. Okay, This is a picture of how God is going to provide another way for his people to be rescued. And ultimately, that's not going to be through anything that we can do, okay? but rather it's going to be through what God can provide. So just like God asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son, okay, God is going to sacrifice his only son for us. And we're going to read about that here in a few more days. Okay? So again, this is just a beautiful picture of what God is going to do for his people. And we see it all the way back in Genesis. So you remember on day one, we talked about Genesis sets the stage for everything else. Ever since the beginning, the beginning of the Bible, okay, God has been pointing us to Jesus and what's going to come later. Okay, so now let's talk about some questions for you to think about at home. Okay, so again, three questions. Okay, you guys know what I want you to do. I want you to either talk about them with someone. So talk about them with a parent or a sibling. Okay, or... I want you to grab a sheet of paper and I want you to write down some thoughts, okay? It's helpful if you keep like a notebook, okay? I like to put my thoughts down in like a journal, okay, where I can write as I read and then I can write the verses that I pick out, okay, and the, the passages that I'm covering and those types of things. So pick out a journal if you haven't already, especially if you're writing all of your thoughts down. That's very helpful, okay? So question number one, how do you think it must have felt for Abraham to receive these promises from God and then be told to sacrifice your son. So if you'll remember way back at the beginning of our chapter, God gives Abraham a lot of promises and he promises these things to Abraham before Abraham really even knew God. Okay? So he gives all of these promises and Abraham trusts in God and he believes his promises. And then God tells him to sacrifice his son, his only son who Abraham thought was going to fulfill all of these promises that God made. So I want you to think about how must, of that, have, how must that have felt for Abraham, okay? Question number two, what was the blessing that God gave to Judah? Now, in our key passages today, we spent quite a bit of time talking about Abraham. And that's because Abraham's very important, but we can't forget about Jacob and Judah and all of those other people at the end, Okay, so if you remember back in the last part of chapter three, okay, God gives a promise to Judah, and it says Jacob told Judah that a lion of a leader would come from his family. Okay, so think about that. Okay, I just read it to you. Okay, but think about what that means. Okay, a lion of a leader. So think about a lion. Think about a leader. Okay, what is that going to mean? Okay, and then question number three, why do you think God kept giving blessings to a not so great people? So again, we're going to start seeing this over and over and over again. Okay, the people aren't great. Again, sin is still happening. Okay, we can't, we talk about these people a lot, okay, but we don't want to, we don't want to make the mistake of thinking that they never made a mistake or that they were without sin. Okay, because they weren't. Okay? But God keeps giving them blessings. Okay? Why do you think God keeps doing that? And not only that, why is that good news for us? Okay? So think about those three things um, in your time at home. Again, think about how do you think it must have felt for Abraham to receive all of these promises and then be told to sacrifice his son? Number two, what was the blessing that God gave to Judah? And then number three, why do you think God kept giving blessings to a not-so-great people? And why is that going to be good news for us? All right, so now we're going to pray, and then I'm going to close this out. All right. God, we just thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to just to gather in your word and to learn more about you and the promises that you've given your people. Lord, we thank you that even then you loved not-so-great people and that 
you were working on a way to save them from their sin. And Lord, we thank you that we're not so great people, but you still love and save us from our sin too, Lord God. Um, God, I just pray for us in this time when we're apart, Lord, that you will help us to use all of our resources well and to help this to be a time where we can get to know you more. Um, God, I just pray that you will just be with us and strengthen us until we can come back together again. In the Senior's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, so that is it for today. So if you have some time, go back and reread those Bible passages from today's story um, with your parents or with a sibling or even by yourself. Um, especially spend some time in Genesis chapter 15, verses 5 and 6, um, and then flip over to chapter 22 and look at verses 1 through 8. Okay, then talk or think about some of the questions you heard today. And then I'll see you again tomorrow for part four, where we will finally move out of Genesis and into Exodus. So have a great day. Remember to be kind and show the love of Jesus to your family. I'm praying for you always, and I'll see you soon. Bye.